Hello and welcome to Sarcastered Videos. Today we're going to be talking about the Netflix original documentary, Get Me Roger Stone. And for those who don't know, the Roger Stone is someone who has been, his name has been in the papers a lot, uh, on the websites a lot, about his relation to Donald Trump and what kind of influence he had or still has on President Trump. And if you don't follow politics a lot, you probably don't know that he, this is somebody who's been kind of involved in political consulting like for a very long time, ever since Nixon. But when you watch this documentary, you do learn that those kind of things. Uh, it's a well-made documentary. It mostly follows Roger Stone, and he talks about himself. He's pretty open and candid, so there's not a lot of secrets there. Except when it comes to more recent events, like the WikiLeaks and things like that. But overall, like even everybody that's interviewed, they're all open and honest about what they think about Roger Stone and what he does and how he does it. So it's it's a good in that way. Like there's no conspiracy or hidden facts that the documentary crew has to track down or anything like that. It's all out in the open, really. So, uh, it starts with him in the Nixon era and how he got started. Uh, one of the things that when he's talking, he talks about politics as show business for ugly people. That's one of the ways he describes things. and he's, He is an interesting character. So, listening to him talk about these things, it is fun. So, um, he shows the, like, and when he's talking about that, he does show, like, how, what you see in a show like The Apprentice, with Donald Trump being this authority figure, the way he's presented, you know, with being professional, and all this stuff, and being popular, like, that's one of those things that when you see that, you know, going from that to being a candidate for president, it's not that far a reach as some people might think. He does actually say how important it is to, uh, to the value of disinformation is the way he puts it. And that's something he learned when he was working on the re-election for Nixon campaign, which is one of those things that got him first into politics. And he talks about, you know, he was, he did get involved in the Watergate trial because of that. Uh, just as a lower member because of money that he made from it. Uh, just uh, He was paid to do things, basically. And then after, he said after Nixon stepped down, he did become friends with him. And that's why, like he said, that he admires Nixon for his resiliency after this happened, things like that. That's why he has an actual tattoo of Nixon on his back, which is pretty interesting, especially for now that he's older. But originally he was voted to um, the, be the leader of the, long, the Young Republicans. This was after he worked on the Nixon campaign in a smaller role. And he basically took dirty tactics that he learned from the Nixon campaign and used it as part of the Young Republicans. He, um, he started things like negative advertising campaigns. He used a loophole which allowed him to advertise on a, a politician's behalf without receiving money from them. And he created the, the like the PACs and the super PACs. And like I'm, I don't follow politics, so they didn't really, in the documentary, define those and how they work, but they just used the term a lot. So that was one thing that could have used a little bit of clarity in the documentary. Uh, he also worked, he was the political director for Reagan's campaign, um, and he his main purpose, and one thing that they gave him a lot of credit for was identifying the demographics to target when they wanted to get elected, and who they should really, the, the votes that they really should be going after. And that was one of his skills. Um, and then they talked about like how he met Donald Trump, and right away he wanted uh, Trump to be running for president 
um, but Trump didn't want to. Um, and they're and they're talking about like how he started this firm, um, which was basically a lobbying firm, and how it created the way lobbying is done now. And, but in the beginning, like they tr they made a lot of money, but they also represented like dictators of other countries and trying to get their agendas in the president's ear, which a lot of people obviously didn't like. And he also talks about how, and that's part of uh, how he worked with Trump because he was a lobbyist and Trump paid them to try and get influence presidents. And this is something that Trump is saying now that he wants to stop, which was interesting. And, you know, he has, he does have a family. They do talk about that a little bit, but not too much. He, they live in Florida. He describes Florida as a sunny place for shady people. Like, he does have a personality. He's a funny guy. Um, they t do a brief introduction of, like, his his wife, his daughter, his granddaughter. But that, that there's not much to that. And then they talk about, like, the when, how he was working on the Bob Dole campaign, but then there was a sex scandal involving him. Not Bob Dole. It involved him, and they thought that they that kind of derailed the campaign. And he, like he said that it's all true, but at the time he was denying it and ended up having to quit. And then during the Bush recount, he was one of the main guys that was down there in Florida when they were trying to recount those, you know, do those hand counts. And they actually had to stop because he was causing, well, he took credit for it anyways, causing riots and things that made the the people working there want to not do work there anymore. Um, and then he said, you know, there's a part in there about him influencing the Reform Party. Like, he wanted Trump, he influenced Pat Buchanan to run as a Reform Party candidate when Bush was running. And then he also influenced Donald Trump to run. And they ended up basically causing all this chaos in the Reform Party so that the Reform Party was useless and stopped being used. Yeah, and it's it's very interesting. He was part. He was behind the Obama birth certificate thing that Trump was constantly pushing for. And there were things during the campaign where Trump says he fired him. He says he quit, but then he came back later, and he he Trump actually ended up hiring somebody from the old lobbying firm. And so it's it's pretty clear that Roger Stone was constantly in Trump's ear. Yeah, even when it came to the idea that even though Trump had the popular vote, the Republicans wouldn't nominate him, and they might let uh, you know let Cruz steal the vote. You know, he went down there and he threatened riots and he threatened you know people showing up at the hotel room of the delegates if they didn't vote the way they should and things like that. He was accused of being involved in the WikiLeaks leak about Hillary Clinton's emails, so he was, he's was he been involved in so much regarding the campaign that it's so surprising that he's not more of a forefront, but that's part of why he was dismissed earlier, or he quit, depending on who you listen to, is because he wanted, he likes the press, he wants to be in front of the camera, Trump didn't like that, Trump wants it to be about him. So that was interesting. And the documentary follows right up until election day to the result, and then that's where it ends. So, you know, I mean, it does follow a lot, and it does include a lot of the campaign and some interesting factoids. Uh, it doesn't come into the more recent news, though, like um, if you are following politics. I don't usually, but sometimes stuff just comes up in on the main, you know, the... The headlines and stuff like that that you have to pay attention to. One of the things was with Trump's recent trip, uh, Roger Stone is one of the guys who criticized Trump for actually accepting the word from the Saudis. Uh, it says that it was actually uh, Trump's son-in-law who seems to be getting more and more powerful in the administration and having more influence and it was his idea. So he, Which he did, did definitely did not agree with. But, you know, overall, it's, it's a good documentary. You do learn a lot about what 
went on and why, you know, Donald Trump, some people thought he would win right from the very beginning. And people like Roger Stone. And how politics can definitely be influenced by things like that. So, it, overall, yeah. Uh, as far as Netflix is concerned, with the thumbs up, thumbs down, I give this a thumbs up. It's very interesting. Whether or not you agree with his stands on things, the way he worked, you do learn a lot about um, how lobbyist groups work, how you know campaigns can be influenced. And it is an interesting thing to know. And so, yes, I would give it a thumb up, thumbs up. And if you like documentaries, it's definitely worth watching. Um, as far as documentaries go, a rating out of 10, I would give this a 7 out of 10. It's good. It's worth watching. And it's entertaining, and you learn from it. And I don't think you can ask much more from a documentary. So... That was Net the Netflix original documentary, Get Me Roger Stone. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, or all of the above. Thank you, and have a nice day.